Eid Mubarak from wherever you're watching us on this wonderful Wednesday, the 10th of April 2024. Good evening and welcome to The Daily Report. My name is George Maringa. The wonderful Roda Nyamai is on Sign Language Interpretation tonight. I'm sitting in for Hibak Said. We have a lot lined up for you, but first, let's take a look at what's making headlines from across the country and beyond. Tonight, Muslim faithful across the country, the region and the globe celebrate the end of the Ramadan fast in a colorful Eid ul-Fitri feast. Na watu wasaidiane ile ule ule mwitu ambao ulikuwa kwa katika mwezi wa Ramadan. Watu wakifuturishana, wakipeana na kadhalika huo huo mwitu uendele baada ya Ramadan. Za siku za sikuku katika mwaka metuandalia ni siku mbili kubwa. Ikiwebo ni Idul Fitr, ambaye ni hii tunosherekea sikia leo, baada kufanikisha mfungo kwa mwezi mtukufa Ramadhani. National unity and calls for the resolution to the current medics strike dominate proceedings during Idul Fitri celebrations as the nation reels from a sustained strike that has hurt medical services. Sirkali naonikana nalegea habana chukua na nguvu mambo ya madaktari kugoma. Starting from taxation, crisis of the doctors, the road accident. Hii Kenya inaonekana ya kwamba mahali naenda hatuone kama ni mzuri. Plus, DCI officer caught red-handed demanding for a bribe before helping a Kenyan recover lost property. In your will receive. Eh? Yes. We thank you for choosing TV 47 to inform you. I'm at George Maringa underscore on X, formerly Twitter. Use the hashtag daily report. Our SMS lines are also open to 2047. Start with your name, how you're watching us from, followed by your feedback, even as you send your aid messages and good wishes across the country. Let's get the show on the road, shall we? As the world commemorates the Adil Fitri celebrations, leaders from the Islam religion have raised concerns on the ongoing strikes by health professionals. The religious leaders now calling on the government and the medics to find a solution to this strike. Elizabeth Atieno opens a broadcast tonight with that report. Thousands of Muslim faithful thronged the Isiolo Islamic Institute where they sought divine intervention to end the ongoing nationwide doctor strike that has paralyzed delivery of health services in public hospitals across the country. Wale sahi wana Afrika ni wale wachini kwa sababu wale wako na mali wale wako na rasmali wanaenda private hospital. Je, wale wanyonge ambayo rais alikuwa anasema ni Hasola Nation? The Islamic leaders have called on the government to cut its expenditure on overseas trips and divert the resources to remunerate doctors. Serikali inaonekana nalegea habana chukua na nguvu mambo ya madaktari kugoma. Starting from taxation, crisis of the doctors, the road accident. Hii Kenya inaonekana ya kwamba mahali naenda the Muslim leaders have amplified their voices, urging the government and doctors to embrace dialogue to treat the ailing health sector. Na maini chipia antana kwa katika siha bora, ili apate kutoa hudumazaki katika kujenzi wa taifa. Mba tu, kila mtu wajishusha, na na uhakika, ya kuwa sului itapatikana na madaktari watarudi kazi. Lakini, sisi tunaomba madaktari, mrudi katika njia mwenyezi mungu. Mwaurumie wana ambao kwamba wana wakimbilia nyinyi ili kusudi mwasaidie. Warudi nyuma kidogo na serikali pia waone ni kitu gani itaongezeka. Kwa sababu at the end of the day, we are looking forward to what we call a win-win situation. Elsewhere, Machakos County Governor Wavinya Ndeti says public health facilities in Machakos are offering full services as the county government has been able to sustain doctors on contract with the county. Kwa sababu madaktari wakikuwa na stand yao, Nao serikali kikuwa na stand yao mwananchi ndio anaumia but the bottom line watu wakuja wakutane this must be about give and take some of us have the comfort of uh, being able to go to private hospitals millions and millions of Kenyans 
They have no voice. They cannot speak. You cannot hear them. The ongoing doctor strike that has entered its 28th day has received backing from different unions, the latest being the Kenya National Private Security Workers Union, who say it is imperative for the government to meet the doctor's demands. Kwa hivyo, ningelipenda kusi serikali ya inchi ya Kenya ilikonzide mambo ya kusema ya kwamba ati hakuna pesa ya kupeana hawa uh, doktari. Kwa sababu, it has set very bad precedence. Inamanisha kwamba sitokuwa tunasaini mambo ya collective bargaining agreement alafu inatupiriwa hivyo kwa sababu hakuna pesa. The doctors' union have since maintained that the strike is still on and are now planning to hold their demonstrations on Tuesday and Thursday next week. Elizabeth Atieno, TV 47. Thank you, Elizabeth, for that. The Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission, ESCC, through its central regional office in Nyeri, on Wednesday arrested Luke Nyasanga, a DCI officer based at Ngano Police Station, Nyandara County, for allegedly demanding a Kenya shillings 10,000 bribe from a local resident who is reported to have lost Kenya shillings 115,000 to fraudsters and needed police assistance to recover the funds. The suspect is alleged to have told the complainant that the bribe was mandatory to facilitate tracking of the fraudsters. In your receive. Eh? Yes. How much? Three thousand. Yes. How much? One, two, three. Put on the other prepared photocopy. We compare. There was. Now 540 families in the villages of Kamenya, Kowar, Kasi, Rawa and Konyango in the sub-county of Rachuonyo North in Hobbe Bay County have been affected by floods due to heavy rains being experienced in the country. The villages are now deserted with houses being submerged in water. Residents have been forced to seek alternative shelter from the continuous heavy downpour. From this, the affected residents are living in fear of being attacked by wild animals and the outbreak of waterborne diseases. The national government has been called upon to offer relief assistance to affected families. We have people who have been internally displaced who don't have a place to call home no roof on top of their heads. Their farmlands have been submerged, and we are also talking about high rates of wildlife animal conflict. Here we are talking about hippominas that are marauding within the community, scavenging for pasture because their grazing lands have been submerged. And this is really a threat to the community and causing a lot of insecurity. There is some diseases that are occur in these our villages because this water here and then it affects us and we come out with a very, very big diseases. Like now, we have cholera here, we have got malaria, and these breeding areas, it affects us because of this flood. We fear in the coming, the coming three, four days, eh, uh, this flood may increase. So we are, we, are, we are requesting these people who are affected within the four villages to move to higher grounds. Already we have the rescue center, which is a sort of primary school. We have a sort of secondary school. We have the surrounding churches uh, within, within these places, like PAG Church. We have a sort of main SDA, then we have Nyando SDA. Now, hundreds of Muslim faithful today came out to celebrate Eid al Fitri in Nairobi and other parts of the country where men, women, and even children gathered at various points to conduct their prayers. Eid al Fitri is a major religious holiday for Muslims that marks the end of the month long fasting period of Ramadan, which is the ninth month of the Islamic calendar. <laughs> Early Wednesday morning. As is the norm every year, Muslims from all walks of life took part in the annual Eid al Fitri ritual. 
According to Muslim calendar, it will feature a major religious holiday that marks the end of the month of long fasting period of Ramadan, which is the ninth month of the Islamic calendar. Uh, leo ni siku ku ni siku ya furaha siku uh, ya kutangamana siku ya kushea yule ambaye yuko nayo eh, kupeana yule ambaye hana in Nairobi County, the Muslim faithful flocked to Sir Ali Grounds to mark the special day where the celebration began with special prayer known as the Eid prayer performed early in the morning after the sighting of the crescent moon Alhamdulillah namshukuru Mwenyezi Mungu kufika katika siku hii ni ya leo siku ambaye alijalia katika masiku za furaha mathalan uh, kila uh, mtu alofunga awe ni mdogo awe ni mkubwa awe mzee awe uh, ni mwanamume awe ni mwanamke anatakaniwa leo atoe zakatul fitr uh, zakatul fitr ni chakula staple food ya ule mji mfano sisi watu wengi wanatumia mchele kwa hivyo utatoa mchele eh, kilo mbili na nusu kwa kila mmoja katika nyumba kila mmoja ambayo yuko chini yako it was the same in Narok where Muslim faithful gathered at the Old Antimama Stadium for celebration with the message of love and unity ringing all over <laughs> In Kinyaga County, men, women and children gathered to conduct their prayers where the Muslim faithful were urged to remember the less fortunate in the society even as they enjoy the feast with their beloved one. Ki uhakika ni siku ya furaha kujumuika pamoja na wale maskini, kusherekea pamoja na wao, ni siku ya kuhurumiana ni siku ya pia kusameheana makosa zetu after the Eid prayer faithful are encouraged to visit each other and especially the less fortunate in the society as a way of spreading love according to muslim calendar Eid al marks the end of ramadan and muslims across the world and within the country have celebrated this special day nelson mwareza tv 47 nairobi Reza for that, this year's Eid al-Fitri celebration echoed a resounding call for unity, harmony and service as leaders voiced their condemnation of the recent displays of jostling for political supremacy witnessed across different counties in the nation. Additionally, Kenyans have been called upon to abstain from the consumption of illicit brew, underscoring the government's concerted efforts towards eradicating this vice. As the sun sets on Ramadan and Muslims worldwide celebrate Eid al Fitri, a resounding call for unity rings out amidst the joyous occasion. In Kisi County, recent political discord involving Deputy Governor Robert Munda has sparked concerns of a power struggle, prompting a plea for harmony among elected officials. <laughs> Kwa nini jamii moja tufarikiane? Hili linatushangaza sana. Kwani kuna shetani gani ambaye kwamba anaingia ndani ya akili ya hawa watu, watu ambao jamii moja, ardhi yao moja, lugha yao moja, misingi yao mi moja, wanakuwa ni wenye kuhtalifiana, kugombana, kuvurutana. Ni jambo muhimu kwa hawa viongozi wetu. Wote kwa jumla kila mmoja kuweza kumheshimu mwenzake juu ya cheo ambacho kwamba alicho nacho. Kenyans have also been called to embrace religion and to desist from engaging in drug abuse. Sheikh Salim Idhoh of Naru County presided over today's prayers, asked the community at large to hold hands towards the fight in efforts to save the future generation. Sentiments that were echoed by Mombasa Governor Abdul Swamat Nasser. Wanainji kwa jumla, wale hata siwa wa islamu. Washirikiane kusawu shida ambaye itatokea kwa hii mambo ya watoto kwa haribika, ina affect mji mzima. Ina affect kusawu tuko ba moja kwa mashule kwa ma university kwa maboma kwa hivyo ni kuwa kuasihi na kuwaomba watu wote tuwe ni makini na hizi ni siku ambazo kwamba hatutaki kusikia any form of incidents and the county government uh, will use all at its disposal to be able to assist the police forces to ensure that we don't have any form of incidences. We need a, a, a county that can be able to be progressive in every means. Yet amid the festivities, economic hardships loom large. Rising basic commodity prices cast a shadow over the celebrations with Muslim leaders calling on President William Ruto to address the pressing economic concerns facing the nation. Kama kweli ulivosikia jana katika tarifa wa Islamu kule Nairobi 
wanaenda kununua manguo vitu ni bei kali vyakula ni bei kali tunaomba pia serikali angalia hali ya uchumi manake inaumiza inaumiza tukisema ukweli na hakuna haja ya kusema ati hapa kule hapana ni ukweli uchumi uko juu the head of state on Monday evening hosted Muslim leaders for iftar, the first meal to mark the breaking of the fast at State House Nairobi, where he urged Muslims to continue offering prayers for the unity and prosperity of the nation. Anne Odida, TV 47. Thank you, Anne, for that. The UDA Party National Elections Board is tomorrow expected to set the stage for the party polls by meeting aspirants from Nairobi County at the party headquarters. The meeting and the planned polls for the party in two weeks' time are an acid test for the party due to internal feuds in the Kenya Kwanza camp over the anticipated merger. Deputy President Rigadi Gashagwa held a meeting with the UDA party officials where party polls was on the agenda. The governing UDA party, which kicks off party elections in two weeks' time, faces an acid test in conducting successful polls and move as United Front ahead of the 2027 elections amid sibling rivalry of an anticipated merger. UDA National Elections Board kicks off the unity test on Thursday when all aspirants from Nairobi County converge at the party headquarters to raise their concerns on the forthcoming polls. Aspirants are encouraged to attend the meetings as this is a forum that will address any queries and concerns that they may have at UB. The platform to ensure comprehensive awareness of election procedures and guidance. On Friday, the National Elections Board will meet aspirants from Busia and Homabe, Isiolo and Garissa on Saturday, and close the curtain with Narok and West Pokot on Monday. Phase one of the polls slated for the 26th of this month will be held in Nairobi, Narok, West Pokot, Busia, Homabe, Isiolo and Garissa counties. The party has since directed all those seeking to contest to register by Friday this week. This deadline is to ensure that there is sufficient time to organize logistical and administrative measures in good time. The board is currently in the process of identifying and recruiting the personnel that will conduct the elections. Deputy President Rigadi Gashagua, who is eyeing the deputy party leader slot, met UD officials on Tuesday at his current residence, where the elections were on the agenda. The much anticipated merger for Kenya Kwanza athlete parties played a part in the postponement of the party polls. Prime Cabinet Secretary Msalem Davadi is said to be eyeing the deputy leader slot, a move Gashagwa's allies from the Mount Kenya region are not happy with, as they feel it will weaken his influence in the party. The party is also at a crossroads in the rest of Mount Kenya region, where the region is unhappy with Kenya Kwanza taxation regime. How the region participates in the UDA polls will serve as a pointer on the region's political future amid the current perceived fallout between the popular Kiharu MP, Ndindi Nyoro, and DP Rigadi Gashagua. The deputy president has recently apologized to retired President Uhuru Kenyatta's family in a move many see as signaling new alliances in the future. Apul Kamau, TV47. Thank you, Apollo, for that. A Mombasa High Court has awarded 6.5 million Kenya shillings to the family of Rahma Ali, whose husband, Omar Farados, had been hunting for in Mombasa for the suspicion of terrorism. The judgment by Justice Olga Sewe comes after a legal action was taken against the National Police, the Director of Public Prosecutions, and Attorney General by the Muslims for Human Rights, Muhuri. The Kenyan government has been criticized for never acknowledging its role in the killing incident and the fate of one Titus Nabiswa, the informant who wrongly led the commandos to Faraj's house. Muhuri, through Khalif Halifa, condemns police brutality, reiterating that no one is above the law while urging more victims to come out and condemn the same. Those involved in the killing of Omar will have legal actions taken against them. The High Court judge, judgment is a milestone in accountability for abuse in Kenya. 
It is the first time a victim's family has been awarded compensation for killing counter-terrorism. In fact, this is the first time. Despite 20 years of state murder, enforced disappearance, and rendition, I applaud Justice Sewe's bravery, which is just first step in holding Kenyan police account over its contempt for the law. But we must remember, the monetary award does not bring Omar Farage back to his family, nor does it hold the criminal RTT, NIS, and ITP officers to account for his murder. Maskitisho yetu makubwa sana, kwamba hivi vifo chini ya mikono ya polisi ni vingi sana, sana, sana. Wacha hizi abazo wanasema za ugaidi. Kuna watu watu kanje kufanya mandamano na wanapigwa marisasi wanauliwa. Sasa pia tukipendelea wale watu ambao wameuliwa kiholela na wale ambao wamepoteswa wajitokeze. Kwa sababu sheria hailali. Sheria always inailea. Na sisi tutasimama kwa titea. Now, residents of Mosaria village in Masiga West Ward in Bobasi constituency are an angry lot after a recent spate of killings in the area culminated in the death of a seven-year-old child in the, and the serious injury of another. With this, they describe as a series of bloody attacks that they feel are enabled by a lax police force. Our reporter, Combo Alfayo, has visited the village. <laughs> Such was the situation in the village of Mosare in Masige West Ward after the residents of the area were filled with anger due to the increased cases of insecurity in the area. This outrage is fueled by the recent brutal killings of a seven-year-old girl, Julie Kerubo, and the attempt of killing of a 16-year-old companion, Shan Norengi, who survived but was left with serious injuries. Wakati walimpanya post-mortem kwa kichu hapa, ni kama watu, wanapia watu marimoja. Kila mtu wanasema walimpia tu hapa. Post-mortem mungine walimpanya kinyama, walifunja imi huu, Kila mahali wali mpasua kila mahali. Wali ya lip mtoto ipaya kapsa. Today the residents hit the streets, demanding that the police officers in Mostaria Station be transferred immediately due to allegation of negligence at work. Asa kila wakati, ya maisha yangu hiko hatalini. Ata usiku mzima wanatembea, wanaongea, wananena, wanasema hakuna jambo tutafanyua. Juhuko Mostaria hameitisha pesa. Ameambia alipe pesa ndia pate usaidisi. Walizi wa hapa. Ndia wasuri wako. Kata mimi naingia huko na napaki gali yangu huko. Wasuri wako. Wapaya wako. Wali wanajukua omba. This issue caused the area MCA Jacob Bagaka to hold a public baraza together with the Deputy Commission of Nyamache Sub-County Jewa Shobongo to calm the situation. Afisa wametoko kwa uwanja matu kwa mkutano. Lakini watatoka mosalia kutoka leo na waende mile? Mile. Mile. Number one. The deputy commissioner, Mr. Joa Shobongo, assured the resident that the situation will change soon, urging for patience. Watu wamili walikamatu. Jana walipelekwa kuchini, kuchukua pli. Na DCI aliomba more days kufanya uchunguzi. Na alipatua 21 days kufanya uchunguzi. Already sample, DNA sample ilichukuliwa. Kutoka kwa marehemu. Na kwanzea kesho. And in the wake of these promises, the residents in the area continue to wait to see if the security agency shall respond swiftly to their request to the serve of justice for the victims of violent crime. 
the latest being the killing of the late Kerubo Julian. Combo Alfayo reporting for TV47, Mosaria, Kisi County. Thank you, Combo, for that. 18 kilograms of bang and 10 liters of illicit liquor have been impounded and three suspects arrested by officers from Malaba Police Station in Teso North Subcounty, Busia County. Area OCPD Joseph Matiku says the three suspects, including an elderly woman who is the alleged mastermind of the operation, were arrested after a tip-off from the public. The three were found in a Nairobi-bound bus. The effort is part of a nationwide crackdown on illicit liquor and drugs in the country. These yellow bags contain 18 kilograms of bang that were being transported to Nairobi's Kayole area from Malaba. Teso North OCPD Joseph Matiku says they received a tip off from the public, which prompted them to visit the scene and led to the arrest of three suspects. Officers from Malaba Police Station uh, got a tip off that there was a Makato which was uh, uh, a Sabirisha of bang. Uh, my officers responded swiftly to our combination to arrest uh, one of one that for my direct shadow. He adds that they found 10 liters of illicit brew alongside the bang. When we, when we were able to search in our papata, uh, 18, uh, around 18 stones, huh? we suspect in the bank uh, and 10 liters of channel. We have also managed to arrest three suspects uh, by the process who are being caught. He has added that operations are underway to ensure there is no sneaking of illegal drugs and illicit brew through the border of Kenya and Uganda. On very high alert, and we are fighting each and every day to make sure that I'm going to buy a bit of a society. From the border, there is always a scan uh, where most of the youth are scanned, and we are able to arrest them from the border of points. But if they use this pandemic and some other uh, means to transport these illicit uh, goods and uh, dangerous drugs, uh, we are able to search. This comes months after the government announced a crackdown on illicit brew and drugs, following a series of deaths caused by consumption of illicit liquor. Vera Alberta, two foot seven. Thank you, Vera, for that. Remnants of the Mau Mau Freedom Fighters who hail in Bahati, sub-county Nakuru County, say Kenya will regret its neglect of freedom fighters, saying they have not been recognized as people who fought for the freedom and independence of Kenya, as Chichi Josephine now tells us. Speaking during the burial of Jeremiah Mushiro, a Mau Mau Freedom Fighter, was buried at his one year old farm within Bahati subcounty in Nakuru. James Kago, also a Mau Mau war veteran, expressed his displeasure with how the country treats its special class of citizens. <laughs> According to the veteran sons, freedom fighters should be recognized alongside those who have contributed to the country in various fields. And the best way to do that is to improve the lives of these heroes, as many are languishing in abject poverty. I would appeal to the government because my father was not recognized as a hero while others were being rewarded. I would just appeal to the government to recognize the remaining heroes, especially those ones who fought for our freedom. They appealed to the state to set up a financial kitty within the government expenditure 
that will take care of the welfare of freedom fighters and their families. They are the senior citizens of the country and they are suffering, they are suffering at home. They become sick, they don't get medication, they cannot afford to go to the hospital. From me, I would appeal to the government to, to, to have a kind of a free treatment to these people. Chichi Josephine TV 47. Thank you, Chichi Justin, for that report, which leads us to a short break right here on the Daily Report. When we come back, we still have more on the other side. Do stay with us. katika mfahamu kiongozi tutakuletea viongozi aina mbali mbali nilikuwa na nisani kama kumi na pia nilikuwa nimenua mini bus mini bus ni koniwa kushinda unaangalia simu ya mzee soma biblia ama ingia kwa washroom kujisuke mpaka nimeletwa hivi i don't know whether any of my children would want to get into the political field sijajua bado kila alhamisi saa moja nusu kuendelea Join us on a journey through the concrete jungles and rising skylines where every beam, every nail tells a story of progress and vision. In every aspect of life, you know, you have to look at several dynamics. From groundbreaking... Now it is with the tech, uh, you can check on different websites uh, or, or you check uh, online and you can see some inspiration. So at least that one would be a direction already. I'll know like what kind of style you, you're going for. To finishing touches, witness the dedication of the hard-working teams who bring these ambitious dreams to reality. The Realtor, Tuesdays at 6.30 p.m. katika mfahamu kiongozi tutakuletea viongozi aina mbali mbali nilikuwa na nisani kama kumi na pia nilikuwa nimenua mini bus mini bus ni koniwa kushinda unaangalia simu ya mzee soma biblia ama ingia kwa washroom kujisuke mpaka nimeletwa hivi i don't know whether any of my children would want to get into the political field sijajua bado kila alhamisi saa moja nusu kuendelea sports news brought to you by safaricom chapa
Welcome back. Let's get sporty. One million shillings is up for grabs in season four of the Safaricom Chapadimba National Finals, which will kick off tomorrow in Kisumu County. The under-20 boys and girls football tournament will begin with the quarterfinals matches, which will be played at Mamboleo Stadium and Moy Stadium. The eight boys and eight girls teams were drawn from eight regions in Kenya, including Western Nyanza, Eastern Rift Valley Coast, Northeastern Nairobi and Central. One million shillings will go to the winners while runners up and second runners up will walk away with half a million shillings and a quarter of a million shillings respectively. After the quarters on, on Thursday, the semifinals will be staged on Friday and Saturday before the grand finale on Sunday. Besides receiving a 4G locally assembled phones and cash prizes for outstanding players, an All-Stars squad will be selected for a training camp in Spain later this year. Safaricom injected over 400 million shillings this season following the participation of over 60,000 300 players from the world levels across the country. Keep Media Limited through TV 47, Radio 47 and TV 47 Digital will air live this competition from tomorrow. We have been given Chuka uh, University, the Scorpions. Na tunajua ni wazuri lazima tuwaheshimu. Lakini that means uh, we have to push hard because Kisumu is more of a home ground kwa sababu si mbali sana na nyumbani but uh, inatupea pressure fulani lazima tu, tu tupatie mashabiki chenye wanataka so our aim ni kwenda ku game ya kwanza tukisha win game ya kwanza tupate momentum ya tournament tukisha pata hiyo momentum we are expecting ku, kufika final na kama tafika final eh, fans should expect the most entertaining final ya Chapadimba eh, that have ever been there kwanza naweza shukuru Safaricom kunipa UMVP Kakamega tena hapo kwa experience Melan vitu mob tukio uko Spain so hizo vitu ni Melan nitakuja kwa apply hapa kwa game hapo Kisumu mashabiki watarajie ushindi tuki win game ya kwanza tu Tarajen Tunajbeba Ikikom. Safaricom is in, is using technology based scouting and how is that? That's through our GPS vests that you see uh, that we've used across the region. So what does this vest do? The vest is able to give us um, data points and biometric and, and data points I mean biometric uh, data points that help now to ascertain um, certain uh, measurements in terms of how someone has run uh, what distance have they covered which positions have they moved and this has really helped to create uh, a more uh, math based so to speak scouting and it's not based off perception and this is what has been used uh, internationally to scout other players be sure to catch the action on our channels. Today marked the second day of the National Secondary School Games in Machakos County and our sports reporter Duncan Mutua has been keeping an eye on what is happening on the ground and filed this report. <laughs> Heavyweights of different regions in the country have continued to lock on in the National Secondary School Games in Machakos County. <laughs> And in rugby, Mango School seems to be the team to beat as they defeated Kitondo School from Makweni 20 to 8, while Nairobi Finest Lenana School defeated Marafa 20 scores to 0. It has not been easy as we saw yesterday. We drew with Kisi, Nil Nil. And uh, today, the match has been fair. We've won 63, 67 3 against St. Saint, uh, Saint Patrick Itens. And uh, we want to assure you that in the next coming matches, Fire. As Western Region finest Butula redeemed themselves from yesterday's disappointment to Stan Rift Valley based it 10 67 to 3, while Saints from Embu defeated Kisi 6 to 3. We started on a, a, a bit uh, low like yesterday, and uh, it was not because of our uh, making, it was because of the the challenges we have which we couldn't uh, be able to to manage like the pitch the pitch was so soggy to rain the whole night so we couldn't ex execute our moves well 
but at least we have um, managed to to do our moves well and that's why we have scored 7-3 against St. Patrick's. In handball, Bonnie Boys from Akwene have booked a slot in the semi-finals after beating Mwangea from Coast Region 31-20. Game ni kwa nzuri, jamii wamejitahidi vizuri. Tumeona wako na endurance ya hali ya juu sana. Ni vijana ambao tunawatakia mema, tunataka hii trophy, hii crown. The national crown. Basketball last year finalists Lesa Hill and Dagoretti locked horns, but it was the Kajiado best side who had the last say. I've seen a lot of young talented players that were not there last year. So I'm glad and I'm happy that basketball is growing. I've seen teams like Sgalame, teams like Lukenya, they've injected in new blood. And uh, I'm just happy to see that also out there there are young players who can play basketball and that's good for the country. We are not worried. We are very okay. Because the game that we play today, uh, we have always played in the final with Laser Hill, and that's fine. It, it was like a final. So this is not the end of the pool. We are going to prepare for tomorrow, and then, God willing, we will take that win, and then we'll meet in the final again. We're not worried. The final matches of the group stages will be played tomorrow, here at the same venue at Machako School. Reporting for TV 47 Sports, I am Duncan Mutua. Thank you, Duncan Mutu, for that. Quarter-final round, remaining matches of UEFA Champions League will be played tonight. Paris Saint-Germain. Safaricom Chapa Dimba. That's all we had time for right here on The Daily Report. We thank you for joining us. My name is George Marenga. You caught me going through some of your Eid messages right here on our SMS platform as well as social media, X formerly Twitter. As always, it is a pleasure to have you join us on the program. My name is George Marenga. The sign language interpreter has been Rhoda Nyamai. Stay safe and be kind to one another as you end up, of course, on the Eid celebrations. From all of us right here at TV, 47 and keep me delimited eat mubarak and have a good night i'll see you tomorrow